Hey y'all, what's up? Welcome back to my channel. Today I had gotten, uh, like my husband, he was like, hey, have you seen the comments on your video? And I was like, no. And I went to my video and there was like a, like a, a new subscriber who had like some comments and she had some questions and stuff. And I never get questions and I'm super excited to have like a question to like answer because uh, like I only have a little bit of subscribers so I don't have enough for like a Q&A so uh, I can finally do like a Q&A video and I'm really excited about it. So my husband's going to ask me the questions and then I'm going to answer them. So okay go. Okay. What's the first question? First question. Is from uh, Tara. Okay, and if I'm looking off to camera, it's because my husband is sitting there and he's right. reading me the questions. Okay, <clears throat> she says, "Hi, I'm newly diagnosed and also from Texas, from San Antonio. Do you know the best facility near here for treatment?" Yes, I do know the best facility in the world. In my heart, I, I say in the world, but it, I mean in my heart, my angel, my pulmonologist angel that was sent to me. He literally saved my life is Dr. Um, Dr. Mello, but his name is oh, Gyro, 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 J-A-R-I-O, Gyro Mello. And he works out of the um, pulmonologist, right heart failure, Methodist clinic that's attached to the hospital when I was, um, very deathly deathly ill the very beginning of ph he was the one that literally lifted me and saved me when i first went to him my heart was extremely enlarged i was already in deep heart failure i was literally like 180 pounds of like water weight and he saved my life my heart was already leaking pericardial fluid which is extremely dangerous and he put me in ICU. I literally went in for my appointment and he said, you're not leaving. He, they wheeled me straight to the ICU. They, and I stayed in there for a month, two months, yeah. two months, something, something like that. Know. A month, two months, something like that. And I did not come out of that hospital for a good long while. I thought I was going to die with how he titrated the medication so quickly the pain but he saved me and he has my heart forever there in san antonio i recently just transferred to my houston doctor because that was just by luck it's in another video um but yes i will forever be grateful to him and if god willing or god forbid anything happen you know i would definitely be going back to the san antonio clinic him, his other doctors are amazing. They're amazing. Awesome. Okay. <clears throat> Next question is from Ondina. She said, How many times? Wait, that's Miss Chinchilla. Chinchilla. Miss Chinchilla. Chinchilla. Yes. We love Miss Chinchilla. Very fabulous. Anyway, okay. Okay. She says, How many times do you have to visit the clinic or doctor and reasons that are more common? Oof. Um. When I was first sick, I would go once every two months, right, I think? Yeah. And now I'm healthy enough that I go once every three months. Right. So every three months, I take a trip to Houston, go do my six-minute walk, usually an echocardiogram. They check me, check all my jugular vein, everything. And... Get an echo. Yeah, do all my stuff. So every three months, you're looking at a pulmonologist appointment for just pH medications and prescriptions and just that part of the illness. The other side, like going to your PCP, stuff like that, I don't get super, um, no, I'm not gonna say that. I, I do get sick, but I don't ever let myself get infection because I always treat my symptoms as soon as I get them. So since my lung function's low, I get, I tend to get like mucusy very quickly, which is probably like, what Rod, once a month? Yeah. Like I have to deal with, yes. once a month I'm dealing with some sort of mucus, slap. congestion, and I'm take and I have to like treat it with mucinex. Mm -hmm. Another month will go by, I'll catch something like a bug or something, and I'll start getting like a cold, 
and have to treat with mucinex and that lasts for three or four days and then my symptoms will subside if you're not treating your symptoms right away immediately you will get throat infection very quickly because our immune system is so low we catch anything from anybody a literal six month old baby can sneeze on me and i'm probably going to catch a cold um it it will i usually don't allow it to turn into a full-blown infection because i treat symptoms aggressively as soon as i feel them coming on and then it, it's really prevented me from having infections throat infections uh, chest infections stuff like that i have had pneumonia i talked about that in another video and i got that when i went to disney world but that's because i was in a huge place with a lot of people so but yeah you'll see i usually see my pcp once every six months because of a throat infection that is like okay i caught a bacteria or something or that i can't get out of <clears throat> okay good um next question from chinchilla how did your life change how much more stronger do you feel and compared to how you were doing before the titration oh before i got on medications i was bed bound i was on a scooter literally um in my house i was in a wheelchair i wasn't able to cook for my family i wasn't able to drive because i would faint i was fainting probably what was the frequency mm, once a week at least yeah i was fainting once a week um that's when i started getting yeah bad. i was literally bed bound wheelchair bound yeah couldn't do much and i couldn't walk around my house i had to be on a assisted living device yeah. wheelchair i was seeing um like they're called spots or like bright lights in your eyes when you look over it's just like lights of spots kind of like when you get a flash from a camera and you look somewhere else and you still see it i was seeing like that bubbles would come all the time I, so my vision was already getting impaired from the pressures in my heart um so yeah i was deathly deathly ill my pressure my lung echocardiogram pressures were at 174 when i first got diagnosed my first heart doctor because I, my pcb sent me to a heart doctor and the heart doctor was like i literally don't know how you walked into this room and sat down because i've never seen anything like this in my whole um what is it like this um since he's been a heart doctor yeah since he had been a heart doctor so he was like i need to go talk to the person that like mm -hmm. teaches me and he's he's an older guy like he's mm -hmm. like 47 yeah he almost was, 50 he was, he was kind of freaking out and he was freaking out a little bit and he was like i don't i have to go check with somebody else before so i was very very bad um yes so compared to now is that what she has yeah like but then when you start the titration and then like my tight well now i am able to walk around the stores i'm able to i don't use a scooter anymore i don't need wheelchair in my house i'm i'm back to a low functioning normal life i don't get to do any physical activities like i can't do bike riding like i used to or roller skating was my favorite with my kids and my husband we'd go to the roller rink and like i loved doing that right. it was one of my most favorite things to do with them and bike riding because my dad taught me to bike ride and like oh i loved bike riding so much and i my disease is advanced to the point where i can't do those activities anymore other phers can do those activities and that's so amazing that their disease hasn't progressed like mine is but, oh excuse me but um yeah my disease is very aggressive it's very, what is the word not aggressive advanced. advanced yeah so i can't do much but i'm very high functioning for somebody with ph right. in my situation because yeah. like i can walk heb and i can go to you know the mall and walk right. around and i'm not going to be carrying bags i'm not right. going to be carrying a purse but i can walk around the mall and mm -hmm. 
you know, do things like that. So I'm very, very blessed and thankful. Okay. Um, let's see. Okay, the next question. Uh, so did you work or, or, when, or you did, when did you stop working if you did? Oh, yes. Um, yes, I have always worked in the primary home care field, which is office work, taking care of, not me, but doing paperwork to make sure that elderly citizens have assisted living services. Sure. And my husband's family, they're so amazing. They have a beautiful, amazing business that they've built. And I used to work for them since I've worked since I was I'm 36. I've worked for them doing this job since I was 19 years old. So we have been together for a long time and um, I stopped working for that co their company in two th 2015. 2015. And it's because I wasn't able to um, give 100% to the job and the illness, the dis this disease honestly came in so quick and fast. It was just, I was normal one day going to the gym and then like the next week I was like, ooh, like I'm kind of short of breath, like I'm, I feel kind of breathy and then the next week I was like, okay, I'm going to the doctor because I have a th like b bronchitis for sure mm -hmm. and then by like literally six months, I, I was literally going to work, coming home, falling asleep on the couch, not eating dinner, just waking up just in time, take a shower, get dressed and go to work, come home from work, fall asleep on the couch and it was the, there was something totally wrong. Then it started getting to the point where I would faint and I was still working and stuff like that. But then as I started to learn more about um, kind of like, okay, you have a heart condition. Okay, now you need to go to the, you know, pulmonologist. As it progressed, I was just no longer able to give the job 100% and I had to resign working for them, which was what, like a very heartbreaking thing because I feel most myself when I'm financially assisting my husband with our family. I've always worked. It's something that I've done since I was very young and it just makes me feel successful to be able to be a working mom, wife, daughter. I don't have siblings, but like, you know, it makes me feel productive as a person. And when I wasn't able to work anymore, it just devastated me. It, it broke my heart. And it's something that I can't express because it was, it was part of my identity, you know? And this disease came in so hard, so fast, and it just took everything that I had worked for away and it still breaks my heart when I think about it and I don't want to get like choked up and stuff but like I haven't worked since then um I've applied for social security disability I've gotten denied because right. apparently they think that I can work <laughs> which is fabulous but I don't know how because I take medications every six hours I'm on IV therapy, which needs to be changed every 48 out, like 48 hours. The making the IV therapy medication takes literally 25 to 30 minutes in a sterile, nobody breathing, no doors opening, no fan, okay. no AC. Yeah. So it's like I can't just be like, oh, you know, boss, hold on, let me go do this. Let me go fix my medications, get myself adjusted. Oh, hold on, I gotta take Lasix, I gotta go to the bathroom every 10 minutes. Like, hold on, I gotta take pills. Like, I cannot do that. So, I have not been able to go back to work, nor do I feel comfortable saying that I could because I know I physically couldn't do yeah, the it. Physical part the lot. physical part of working, I could not do. <clears throat> right. um, even like... Bending down. Bending down, squatting, right. um, cleaning my house. I can't even do that to the ability that I want mm -hmm. to do because my heart just starts pounding, pounding, pounding. Yeah. So yes, no, I don't work and hopefully we'll hear, oh, my social security, I, I got denied, did the appeal and really we don't see. know. We don't know anything. So we'll see. Okay. Who knows girl with Corona going on. <laughs> yeah. I won't know for another two years if I if I got that. But I'm very blessed that my husband's able to support our family 
and I'm very 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 blessed and thankful that my husband is he brings home all the bacon all the right bacon. <laughs> and, the right. Steak. and the steak <laughs> okay yeah. next question is um, uh, okay on your plug how many times did you get your plug infected plug oh gross mm, uh, the, port. the port it's called a port yeah. um, I've only had infection one time right right yep. one time and what it was is what we learned is that it was a reaction a reaction right so I had the port on this side for four years five years Me, four years I think yeah, five, maybe five. I don't, I don't know. Go to the video. Four or it's, five. Go <clears throat> back in the videos and look. Then the replacement happened. Then it fell and all that. Right. It came apart at night. All that stuff. It's all in the previous videos. You can go back and check them. But when they replaced this port, they moved it to this side, which right. you see, I'm still have a scar. Right. I'm still trying to get rid of it. It's a process. I feel very like not i'm not insecure about it but i don't like the way it looks because people think that i shoot up everywhere in my <laughs> neck when i go to h-e-b and i'm walking around, well pre-covid when i would go to h-e-b they were like okay girl. and i'm like no you don't understand it's not like and they were like uh-huh okay <laughs> yeah. but yeah so um they moved it to this side and what this side of my body when they put it in they used chloroprep bio patch yeah. the chloroprep bio patch did not agree with this side of my body and it caused a reaction that caused an infection and it caused this side to reject right. um, we're thinking that it was the chloroprep mm -hmm. they don't know why this side rejected but my no 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 I'm, I'm sorry I'm forgetting this side I didn't have an infection I didn't have an infection in my blood I didn't have infection topical right. this side it just rejected but what my doctor is thinking now is your body probably didn't like the bio patch that we right. put something like that I don't remember so anyway this side rejected put it back in on this side tried the bio patch it had chloroprep on it and that's what caused like a topical infection yeah, reaction reaction basically it was the reaction in my body made a topical infection they told me to remove the bio patch let it be free yeah. no stickers nothing. no nothing nothing it was just know. out there naked look at the videos in the past you'll see me freaking out about it and it healed up and everything's been great and all of the little juice and ooze and gross stuff went away yep. and it's been healthy ever since and nothing's ever been worse yeah been pretty been great so pretty good. technically i've only had one topical infection on this side okay and then um or a reaction yeah. whatever you want to call it i don't know uh the medicine how easy was it for you to get familiar <clears throat> with the medicine and how to program it oh that was extremely extremely and then there's like and make sure there the accurate, you're accurate for your doses. I guess your medication. Yeah, so basically the question is how comfortable was I learning? Yeah, getting, how familiar, to yeah, getting familiar with the, the medication. The, the learning how to make the, the medication, pump. learning yeah. how to deal with the pump in the computer, and, the doses when you're and the medication. learning, yeah, all the milliliters yeah. of the medication. Okay, well, it's kind of a long story, but you're obviously watching my video, so you got time. <laughs> but um, I came from Velitri, and like I said, I think I said in the previous videos, I literally fainted and woke up with this port in my chest, and it was very traumatic, very scary. I was traumatized. I was terrified. I was just wanting to cry all the time and but i had very small children I, they were all very small and i had i had huge reasons that i had to live and i was terrified when the nurse was like okay just very normal very casual and i'm just like going through this terrifying traumatic 
event in my life i have this tube coming out of my chest i was literally like 30 years old with three kids a husband and i, I was just I can't do this I don't want this on my body like there has to be something else there give me some pills give me anything like you know and it's like there was nothing else this is it like this is your life now and I literally in that moment made a choice put everything away all my feelings all my sadness my tears my grief I just was like I don't have time for this right now I gotta put this in a cabinet and deal with this later and I gotta fight for my life right now. And that was my motivating factor. And I, I, I told myself like, you can either lose yourself in grief and cry and, and, and stay there, or you can stop that, be a grown up, and learn how to do this. And it, I, I made the choice and I was just like, I gotta do this. And so I put everything down, all my feelings, it's like I, I just made them small. And I looked at the nurse and I was like, okay, how do we do this? Tell me how to do this. Tell me everything about it. I'm super terrified. She was like, it's okay, you're gonna be fine. And I had a spiral notebook mm -hmm. and I wrote Get down every, <laughs> <coughs> excuse me, everything about it, any question I had. Okay, step number one, do this two do this three do this and the nurse would leave and i would like go over it and go over it and study it okay. and um that's how i taught myself how to use it and they left a machine there the little machine they left this part there and they were like okay here you know mess with it like learn it so i would do it over and over again do it over and over again it wasn't attached to my body it was like one for you to learn purpose and so i would just practice with it over and over practice with it over and over look at my notes read everything and until i was comfortable with it and i did that for like four days straight and i was never comfortable it took maybe three months for me to feel comfortable yeah. and then that comfort turned to like oh okay i got this yeah. and so by the end of the year i was like oh i got this yeah. like it's totally fine and now i'm amazing i can do it like amazing no problems i'm like cookie cookie i'm fully accepting that this is my life and i can like breeze right through it and it's like amazing You're pretty fast now yes and i'm not scared and i'm not nothing but at first yes like give yourself time like it is yeah. very traumatic and it is very scary but you can do it you got to make the choice that you want to do it that's it you got to choose okay then uh, last one is um how and the maintenance of the carter box are you or you still have to have that on cartridge ice? oh cartridge the cartridge box uh do you still have to have it on ice no, um, I first started off with Velitri medication and that medication does need to be on ice because it needs to maintain 70 degrees. That's the life that it's happy at. Anything hotter, it gets, um, it's just not good for the medication in the cartridge. So that one, if you're outside, if you're gonna walk your dog and stuff, you have to make sure that it, you have your ice packs on at all times. When I moved to my second pulmonologist my, in my San Antonio area, um, Dr. Mello, is when I got switched to Remodulin. So now I don't use Velitri, I use Remodulin, which is an easier drug. I have to change my cartridge every two days, not every single day. And that uh, IV therapy holds up better to heat. So basically, the nurse that was teaching me from a credo was like, if you're okay the drug is okay if you're like 105 and you got to get inside then the drug has to get inside so i come from velitri where i needed the ice pack on all the time so even though now i'm on remodulin and don't need that if i go to the beach i put an ice pack on my medication if i go to a festival or i go to the park with my husband and the kids i put ice packs on my drug because it's a personal preference that i've just learned to 
do for myself. It's not gonna hurt anything. It makes me feel better about it. And if I'm gonna be at my kid's baseball game and it's an hour and it's 85 degrees, I'm probably not gonna put an ice pack. But if I go to the beach, I'm definitely gonna put an ice pack. So it's all personal preference. Um, but for Velitri, ice pack is required. For Remodulin, it is not so much required. There's different rules for different drugs. All right. <clears throat> okay, and that's it. Oh, that's it? Yeah. Okay, well, I am so appreciative for your comments and questions, and I am very open to answering any pH questions that can help you in your journey. My journey has been long and it's been hard, but with this disease, with this diagnosis, you just got to roll with the punches. Things are going to happen. You got to get up and you got to keep going. And so I'm not going to let that affect me. I'm going to figure out some other way to live because I'm going to stay alive. <laughs> Even if I have to change medications yeah. or something, we'll make it God happen. is going to make a way. <laughs> yeah. So thank you for watching my video. I appreciate it so much. I'm your PH friend from Texas, and I will see you in the next video. So, bye.